You got the touch. You got the power. Yeah. Hello and welcome to. Hold on a second. you protect me wait a second you're a t-800 a terminator if i was programmed with emotions i would be surprised <sighs> thanks for that useless bit of info strange my memory bank showed that you love knowing useless information i do but <sighs> whatever let me guess i sent you from the future you did. Obviously, to protect me. Yes. But from what? In the future, you will be hunted by an organization of angry out-of-work action movie stars whose careers were ruined by the return of Arnold Schwarzenegger to filmmaking. To prevent this from happening, they sent another Terminator back in time to kill you. But why would they want to kill me? It is believed that your review of The Last Stand is what revives Arnold's career. Do they even know if I like the movie or not? That information is unavailable. So they're just assuming it's my fault? Yes. <sighs> Story of my life. We must leave before the other Terminator arrives. <sighs> First, you don't even know if I'm the trigger for this future that you're from. Second, it's possible that by coming here you've created this future. Although, quantum physics would argue that there are an infinite number of ways that the time might progress, and that each one of those possibilities spins off and creates parallel universes where that choice was made. Which means, the time that you're from is only a possible future. It's all... Wibbly, wobbly, tiny, whiny stuff. You are one nerdy mother. Are you supposed to make a noise like that? You programmed me to be unable to cuss. I will demonstrate. You whole. Ha <laughs> ha! That is so awesome! My GPS indicates that the other Terminator is nearly here. Then let's compromise. I'll take the risk of doing my review, and you can stand outside my door and guard me. Deal? That falls within my mission parameters. Good! Now, uh, could you... Go do your thing. <sighs> okay. Now, where did I leave off again? Ah, yes. Hello and welcome to But I Digress, the vlog where sometimes my mouth goes faster than my brain. I am your host, Nathan Call Me Nate Marchand. And this week's episode will be another movie review, specifically The Last Stand, starring Arnold Schwarzenegger. Now, I gotta tell you, Arnold Schwarzenegger is one of my all-time favorite action stars. Not because he's the best of actors, let's face it, he's not winning an Oscar anytime soon, but because of his physicality, his raw charisma, and an accent that allows him to say the corniest lines ever written and make them sound awesome. Now, in this movie, he plays the sheriff of a small Arizona town along the 
Mexican border that has become the unwitting target of an escaped Mexican drug cartel leader who was blasting toward them in order to cross over into Mexico and escape the feds. The characters in this are, are really solid, which is, an, which is nice in an action movie. The heroes are definitely underdogs. They're just the deputies and a sheriff in a small Arizona town. They're not used to a lot of crazy things happening. So they definitely feel they are outclassed and outgunned going up against a heavily armed and very deadly Mexican drug cartel, which makes them very identifiable characters and helps to create some great suspense. And the townsfolk in this movie are actually very entertaining, surprisingly enough. And at points, they kind of steal the show, even from someone like Arnold Schwarzenegger. In particular, Johnny Knoxville, who I didn't even know was in this movie until I walked into the theater, co-stars as a gun enthusiast who is a little bit crazy, because as we all know in movies, gun enthusiasts are a little bit cuckoo, but I digress. And he gives names to everything that he really likes, and he supplies them with guns later on when uh, they know the cartel is about to get there. So he's a very fun character. At the beginning of the movie, he's showing off this handgun that he just got that has recoil so powerful that it flies back and hits one of the deputies in the face and breaks his nose. He's very entertaining. In action movies, they're often defined by their villains. Because if you don't have a, a, a good villain and that is a certifiable threat, even if you have the greatest of heroes, no one will like the movie. And this one definitely has, a very good, uh, has very good villains. In particular, the aforementioned drug cartel leader, who is quite brilliant. His escape plan is very elaborate. He's anticipated everything that the feds are going to do to try to stop him, and he outwits them at every turn, and then has the gall to call him up on his cell phone and taunt them. He's bribed all the right people. It's, he's very intelligent, like I said. And he's also very daring, because you find he used to be a race car driver, and you find this out because he escapes from the feds in a really souped-up Corvette, which is a sweet ride, I might add. And he's doing all of these crazy stunts as he's barreling his way down Arizona highways to, to get to the Mexican border. And you also find out that he's quite proficient at Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu because he starts whipping out all of these crazy moves when he's fighting Schwarzenegger at the, at the end of the movie. So, like I said, great villain and a great opponent for Arnold there at the end. This is a pretty well-written script as action movies go. As I said, they already have some outmatched heroes, which is great for creating suspense. Another great suspense-building tool that they have is it has a bit of a ticking time clock trope in here, because the drug cartel leader is racing toward the border, so the feds call up Arnold and they tell him, hey, we have an escaped fugitive heading your way, you need to be prepared, because he might come through your town. So they start scrambling to get ready in case he does come through, and obviously he does. And uh, the characters are, uh, have some depth to them, which is a nice change in a lot of action movies. They tend to be flat characters. They have some romantic entanglements. They have some ambitions that they want to accomplish and then get interrupted by all of this craziness. There's a, a young deputy who, uh, who works with Arnold, and he wants to get out of his small town and go out and see the world and work in L.A. as a cop, and he's hoping that Arnold... His character can set him up with a job over in L.A. because Arnold used to work in L.A., but he left because he saw so much death and suffering that he couldn't handle it anymore and moved out into the Arizona desert to be the sheriff of this small town so that he could have a, a quieter life. And there's a, some pretty good acting in this, too. There's a, some nice tender moments, actually. Uh, this is a little bit of a spoiler, but one of the characters does die, and it's a, it's a very well done scene. You do feel for these characters as they mourn his death, and it even gives Schwarzenegger a chance to do some actual real acting, and he doesn't cry or anything, but it shows that he has a little bit more range as an actor than he may have had you know, a few years ago, which is, a, which is nice. And uh, the, like the other acting in this is pretty solid too. The the nice thing is that these are characters, the, these are actors that realize their characters are outclassed and they're not used to all this craziness that's going on. They're not soldiers, so when they're running out into these big shootouts, they are genuinely frightened. And it's a nice change because a lot of times in action movies, then the characters run off into gunfights or into fights in general. They're just they're so confident that you know. I mean, it's fun to watch, but it's nice to see how that they've humanized them in this story. 
There's a pretty good amount of comedy in this movie as well, which was a little bit surprising. As I mentioned, you know, there's the, the bit with the recoil on the gun hitting guy in the face. But my favorite bit in the whole movie is this part right before the climatic shootout where Arnold goes running into this diner to warn everybody in there that they need to go to their homes in order to avoid, uh, to avoid getting shot. And there are these two old guys there about ready to order their breakfast. And one of them says, I am set something, it says something like, I am 72 years old, I have high cholesterol, and I am ordering a double-sized omelet with bacon. I'm not afraid of death. And then his buddy sitting next to him says, I'm having the same thing he's having. So Arnold just says, okay, fine, just stay away from the windows. And goes out to get ready to meet the goons before they get there. So like I said, it's very laugh out loud funny at points. The action in this is really exciting. There's plenty of gunplay in this, including some classic Arnold Schwarzenegger shotgun action. Because you can never go wrong giving a shotgun to Arnold Schwarzenegger. Who, I might add, even at age 65, can still kick butt and take names while spitting out one-liners like, Welcome to Summerton, and I'm the Sheriff, which he says right before he blows one of the bad guys away. It's great stuff. And uh, there's lots of other kinds of guns in there. There's some sniping, there's machine guns, shotguns. One of the most interesting ones that's in there is there's a, an old World War II era Gatling gun that gets whipped out that Johnny Knoxville calls Vicky the Nazi killer. It's all really, it's all really fun. But even with all of this loud, insane action that's going on, there are still points where the movie slows down and uses silence to build some suspense and create some build up to the next action sequence which just makes it which helps really create some tension and really whet your appetite for the next action sequence and the climactic fight between Arnold and the cartel leader is really fun it's almost like watching a UFC fight because you got Arnold whipping out wrestling moves and as I said the cartel leader is proficient at Brazilian Jiu Jitsu it's pretty brutal Oh, and I forgot to mention there's some really great car chases in this movie, too. Especially at the end when the cartel leader is run, has run off in his Corvette and then Schwarzenegger goes over and he grabs a Mustang and he goes after him and they go, they cut through a cornfield, start mowing down all the corn stalks, trying to find each other. It's really great stuff. And, but I know I've been singing this movie's praises, but it's not perfect. As I mentioned, it has... It has kind of a, it has a lot of comedy in it, but that kind of leaves the tone a little bit uneven because the, the comedy is very laugh out loud, sort of funny. But then the rest of the movie, it takes itself very seriously. So you, I kind of found myself sitting there wondering, okay, is this supposed to be a funny action movie or is this supposed to be a, a very serious action movie? So it's, it's a little weird at points. And it is kind of predictable. In particular, there's the, a setup at the beginning of the movie for a really big joke that gets paid off at the end. But despite that predictability, it's still pretty fun. So, my final score for The Last Stand is a solid B+. It has some great action and some fun characters, and it's awesome seeing Arnold back in a starring role again. Even if the movie itself is a little bit predictable and a bit uneven in terms of tone. So, here's hoping that The Last Stand is not Arnold's last movie. Well, I got through that, and I'm still alive. <laughs> I guess that killer robot isn't so killer. Isn't that right, T-800? Wait, did he just...
Call me baby. yourself.